It's a beautiful thing when you're about 10 miles away from TPC and Tom gives us a call and says, hey, you might want to check out this beautiful 97 C4S. Well, it looks pretty stock except for the 19 inch HRE wheels. It's a clean looking vehicle, but what lies beneath is a little bit of modern technology. Be sure to log into your YouTube account, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. Yes, exactly. So this is the classic black 1997 993C4S. So what is unique about this car is it has our DSC active suspension on it. This package includes our standalone controller, has three mode, normal, sport, and track. So in each mode, you feel a graduation in the stiffness, and then within each mode is active to the driver's input, just like our plug and play DSC controller that a lot of people are aware of. So uh, with this package, there's also our custom coilovers. We adjusted the ride height to RS spec, and we did an RS spec alignment on this car. So this is the uh, active suspension package that's extremely versatile, that brings an injection of new technology into a classic automobile. Sometimes when someone has a 991, 992, they have the luxury of active suspension, but when this car came from the factory back in the day, it had your standard you know, spring over shock, no adjustability really, mm -hmm. but you're now able to bring modern performance into an older car. Exactly, so for about 20 years, so we, we had just uh, the stock suspension or uh, different variations of upgrades, one-way, two-way, three-way, and even four-way adjustable so shocks. All of those are static damping, whereas this is active. So this is going to be much closer, perhaps maybe even a little bit better than the stock PASM. So is it simply a bolt-on or the... The, the mounting points of the new suspension exactly like the old one and could this be converted back to stock if someone wanted to do like a vintage restoration? Yes, yes, and yes. Perfect. So yeah, so the uh, coil over is made to exact specifications to fit this car with ride height adjustment as front camber plate, plate, rear monoball, top mount, and you can variate, um, have different spring rates based on what your usage is. And uh, as far as the electronics goes, is a self-contained package, has a control box, the brain box, and a wiring harness that only needs power and ground. So how custom can you go with the setting of the suspension? Is it custom to the car? Is it custom to the driver? How far can you go with that? You could do a lot with it because we made the range of the shocks as far as the damping range, where full soft will be softer than stock and full stiff is what would be equivalent to a 993 cup car. Oh, so wow. you have this long range, a wide range, and using the electronic, you can access the range in real time. So those of you that are driving modern 911s, you're used to your steering wheel, and you have this knob that you rotate to go from normal, sport, and sport plus to change your suspension settings. Some of you have a button on your dash that you can change the shock settings. What do you do in here to control the shock settings? We install a button. Let me show you. All right, I'm looking, but I don't see anything. Oh, there it is, underneath. Yes, yes. so here's the button, nicely concealed. And it has, there's uh, LED on the button. Normal mode will be LED off. You push the button once, it'll activate sport mode. The LED will stay lit. Uh -huh. And press the button again, you'll have uh, track mode, which I guess you could say that's Sport Plus. Yeah. Uh, the LED will flash. That's it. So basically, you can control your full suspension with the push of a button. Of a button. Yeah. Yeah. We can put this button anywhere we want, but in this case, the customer has his uh, navigation system here, which he uses. So we decided to put it lower. Very cool. Now we get back to my favorite part of a C4S: the wide fenders, which hides also the coilover setup that you have on mm -hmm. the front. Curious, did you keep the sway bars? Yes, the sway bars are stock because this is mostly a street car. A customer is gonna take it to the track once or twice just for the novelty of it. So what about bushings and such? 
So all of the bushings on this car are in excellent condition. This is a relatively low mileage car that's been garage kept its entire life. So we inspected all of the bushings before we started the work. We would have advised the customer if anything needed to be replaced, but all of the control arms are in excellent condition. And we're not going to go all monoball on this. because This is a street car. It's a street car. It's a street car. Now that you've got the suspension modernized on the C4S, you need a little bit more propulsion. This car came from the factory at about 282 horsepower at the flywheel, but there's a little bit more motivation in it now. If you don't mind, pull the lid release. And let's have a look. Definitely not stock. Look at that beauty. A supercharger. Yes. So this car is a bone stock C4S, made 240 horsepower at the wheels. At the wheel. So, so 282 yep. at the crank, so about 240, 242 at the wheels. So with a low pressure supercharger bolted on top of the stock engine, now it makes about 300, 305 at the wheels, and there's about 80 foot pounds increase in torque. Now this looks, I mean, it's really neat in here. In fact, uh, the, the new intake setup gives you a lot of room and access. I was surprised to see how nicely it tucks in here. Now this has been a 20 plus year development. This is not something you just came up with. Yeah, we developed this in about 1995 and we started selling them right around 1998, 99. So we've been selling this product for 20 plus years. And over the years, uh, we have done various updates to it, just like any company would. So the intake, uh, the original intake, you basically lifted off the air boxes. I think um, the blower fan, is it modified or moved over a little bit? We stock? just, yeah, we just lo relocated the HVAC blower fan. Okay. So it retains all of the HVAC functions. It's just in a different location because we have to make room for this supercharger. And here we have the inner cooler cone air filter. We have widened the belt so it doesn't slip. And so I noticed the uh, crank pulley is a, a, a dual row so that you can maintain the belt for your AC compressor and then you have the drive unit and you've got this um, the, uh, the tensioner that you added on. Yes, exactly. So the tensioner keeps uh, proper tension on this wider belt and it propels the supercharger all the way up to the red line with no slippage. Now tell us a little bit about the supercharger itself. So this is an Eaton Gen 4 M90 supercharger. So Eaton is a giant company that produce, designs and produces superchargers for a lot of OE car makers. So we have a custom nose drive with this length here made for this application. So this packages very nicely in the 993 engine compartment. And this is a twin screw design? Yes. Okay, so as the engine spools up here, turns here, the twin screws spools up, blows air through here, goes into an intercool and I believe this is also water cooled. That's right. This car is now partially water cooled. It's not just air cooled. So uh, we have antifreeze in this car in the intercooler. So the tank is also built into the intercooler. There's an electric pump right here, right here yep. that circulates the coolant all the way up to the front where we put a small radiator and we sandwiched it to the factory oil cooler. So, so everything is that, is that yeah. up front in yeah. the, in the uh, passenger side fender? Yeah, inside okay. a bumper. Okay. Oh, inside the bumper. Okay. And then so once it goes through here, gets a dense charge, gets cold, comes right back through the back down into the intake and forces the air into the engine. Yeah, just like any modern uh, force induction system. So are, are the injectors the same? Does the, the, the computer have to be remapped to accommodate for all this? Yes. So, uh, well, the injectors are the same. Uh, we kept the stock injectors for drivability. So for this application, we include a piggyback or a tandem computer. Basically, it expands the range. When the system detects boost, it will add more fuel through secondary injectors. Ah, okay. And it will adjust the ignition timing accordingly, according to boost. But when it's not on boost, since it uses a stock injector and it uses a stock ECU as the base value, it drives perfectly normal like a stock car. So after in the injectors, is everything stock on this car? Yeah, the uh, engine is completely stock. So this is a bolt-on package, bolts on top of the engine and uh, none of the exhaust system has been altered. Everything all is your emissions is All your emissions are still in place? Yes. Wow. Yeah, smog pump, catalytic converters, secondary air injection, all in place. 
So when someone decides to do this, this car happens to be a 70,000 mile example. Is this recommended for cars only with low mileage? Or if, you're, if your car happened to have 120,000 miles, let's say, would it be able to stand this new addition of power? That's an excellent question because this is a Metzger engine. And for this application, the engine is way over built. This is, you know, this Metzger engine will handle 600 horsepower easily. When they put it out at the factory, 282 or under 300 horsepower, there's actually a lot more room for horsepower improvement. And um, to that point, we actually have, in our shop, we have taken apart these engines to repair oil leaks. At the stock horsepower level, even with a hundred plus thousand miles on it, as long as the engine's not abused, mostly highway miles, all the internal parts look brand new. Wow, that's amazing. What I love about this kit, many of you that have decided to add horsepower to an early car, a 993 such as this, and let's say you wanted, the, this is a 3.6 you know, from six, the factory. Yeah. Some people punch them out and do 3.8s, mm -hmm. 4 liters, which is certainly an option, and you can get to similar power levels, but that's a big process, whereas this one is a bolt-on, and you can get this done in how many days? We generally ask customers to leave their cars for two to three weeks because we always have a lot of different things going on at the shop. But usually in this time period, from beginning to end, we can have this bolted on, dyno ready, and out the door. So for me, that's about, what, 80 plus horsepower uh, added to this car. You've got a new suspension. Now the only thing we need to do is take it for a ride. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Now this will not be a typical one mile review. I have Boggs here, Damon's actually on vacation, so we're kind of making do with the equipment that we have left at the office. So the good thing about it is I don't have to drive just one mile. I can drive a couple of miles and get an impression of this car. Right off the bat, I noticed the clutch is heavier in this car. I believe it has a GT3 uh, clutch assembly in there. Um, some of you made fun of me about the long throw that the factory 993 Turbo had as far as a shifter. This one has a shift kit in it. It's a little bit notchier, but the throw is definitely shorter. Uh, I'm gonna take this one, I like this. Everything else looks extremely stock, no weird lights or anything. We'll keep it in the um, comfort mode for now, and we'll take off. Notice, I don't know if you can see it from this angle, but the steering wheel is a smaller diameter, different steering wheel. This is a Momo steering wheel, aftermarket piece, as opposed to the airbag uh, four-spoke that uh, normally comes with this car. I like the smaller diameter in terms of feel. It does cut off a little bit of the tack, but that's all right. What I've been told is the suspension for this car has like a G meter in it. It knows to keep the car relatively flat regardless of the sh uh, shock setting that you choose. So even if you have it in normal, if you dive into a corner, it's gonna automatically try to keep the car flat. It'll be a softer setting, but as far as the lean and pitch of the car, uh, it knows to keep it flat. Ooh, you can hear that whine in the back. That, it's like the twin screws do make some noise and listen to that. Now it has four pounds of boost, about 80 more horsepower to this setup. Like I said, it's a little bit less power than the turbo and it feels it. It, it definitely doesn't pull as hard as the turbo, uh, but the, the power comes in earlier, I feel. Very manageable, very linear, no lag that I can feel. I love the shifter. Uh, this is a must, you know, unless you want to keep your car 100% stock, I think this upgrade to the shifter is a very nice addition. I'm not usually a huge fan of short shifters, but this one makes it feel very modern. So you, as you can tell over those bumps, very comfortable, it feels very stock. One thing to note is not only when you put a suspension on the car do you have to have the right suspension, but you have to have it set up correctly. The alignment, um, the, you know, the user settings. TPC is really known uh, on the track and they're known for it because they really know how to set up a car. 
and it's no different when it comes to the package that came on this car. What I like about it too is even though it has a sporty suspension, it tracks very well. You don't find some cars that are lowered and have sport suspension, they tend to like, you know, want to pivot on irregularities on the road, whereas this car, everything is very neutral. I gotta say the whirl of that supercharger adds a little something to the experience. It's not something that I expected. I guess I should have known. Um, in, the, in the 993 Turbo that I drove, you really didn't hear or feel a difference in terms of um, you know, the, the turbo kicking in. But with this car, you do have a sense that something special is going on with the engine bay having a, a supercharger there. All right, so here we go. Effortless. The RPMs build. The RPMs build quick. Now, if you drove this car like your grandfather, you get the same gas mileage as you would in a 993. But if you dip into it, then you really should expect that your gas mileage is probably going to be reflected uh, very similar to a 993 Turbo. You know, I, I take back my previous statement in terms of power being less than than a turbo i know that probably factually is correct but the point and shoot nature of this car oh, i gotta say i think it comes on stronger than a factory 993 turbo and maybe because i hear what's going on that is impressive all right so let's turn around in this lot here and put it into sport mode like the 993 turbo i drove this is also a c4s means it's also all-wheel drive I'm able to dip into the throttle all the way and it kicks in it's not violent it's very linear very composed where I really notice suspension ironically is in the braking where it keeps the car quite level when you step on the step on the brakes um, it's sort of an even drop down of the chassis as opposed to a hard nose dive which is what you want on the track or on the street keeping the car composed it rides a little firmer right Boggs but it's still not uncomfortable it's still a very reasonable ride not uncomfortable at all you can probably see in the photo as we went through there that my body probably jumps around a little bit more but still very very composed now I'm gonna hit it one more time and now it's blinking now we are in what's sport plus for this car so we will drive slowly through this little area here and then we'll turn around and come back and see what it feels like we'll take it easy through here let's feel the bumps oh yeah it's definitely more solid it's more of a clunk clunk wow it's so direct I'm speechless I'm paying attention Woo! wow is all I can say I mean it really does firm up just like a modern car does. You could never do this with the stock suspension of a 993. You have three personalities now that you can choose from for your vintage 911. You're probably wondering what's it cost for all of this fun? Well, retail roughly, you're looking about $10,000 for the suspension. And uh, for the supercharger upgrade, you're looking at about 20,000. Obviously it's dependent on your car and you know, things that they have to kind of uh, get the car up to spec in order to accept all these parts, you might uh, run a little over. But at $30,000, you're making a significant change to the drivability of your vintage 993, and you're getting 80 horsepower. 80 horsepower out of an engine that comes from the factory that is very efficient. That is hard to do. And, you know, unless you do a 3.8 or 4 liter, um, rebuild slash upgrade 
this kind of power is hard to come by. And let's not forget, this is incredibly reliable. It's a four pound boost system. So you're not overtaxing the motor. So if you have a 993 and you have the means to do this upgrade, I'd highly recommend it.